English Year 8 Term 3B Creative Writing. OK, welcome to Week 3, Lesson 3, where we will be producing our KIP, our Key Indicator Piece. So putting all the learning that we've done over the last three weeks together into a 45-minute piece of writing, which will then be sent to your teachers and will be assessed and you'll be given some feedback on what you're producing. So hopefully uh, what you'll get today will be something you're proud of and something that you're uh, excited to get feedback from. Now, we've been focusing on descriptive writing in weeks one and two, and in this week, we began looking at narrative writing, which we will continue next week. However, use the skills that you've developed in your descriptive writing today, because all these skills we've been learning are transferable. Now, as always, you can take your retrieval quiz either by clicking the uh, knowledge retrieval sheet icon at the bottom of the screen there, if you're on a PowerPoint or if you're on a PDF. If you've downloaded the video, you can type in the link at the bottom middle of the screen or easiest of all, if you're on YouTube, just click the link in the description below. Five questions to answer and you'll get feedback immediately on that uh, emailed or sent to you. So our learning intention for today's session is to construct a clear and detailed creative piece. Now I say creative because you're going to get the choice today as to whether you're going to produce a narrative piece of writing or a descriptive piece. Now remember those skills that you'd use for both are interchangeable. They're really, really similar. The only main difference would be that a story would have some kind of dilemma in. So whichever one you choose, you're going to construct that clear and detailed piece and you're going to use a plan to be able to do that because you can't be clear and detailed without first planning it out. You're then going to aspire to craft a clear and detailed piece. And as we always talk about the difference between constructing and crafting is the difference between just organizing something in a paint by numbers style fashion. So you've got all the elements you need to make a story to crafting where you take care, where you're careful, where you're uh, more interested in your own writing. So those are our intentions for today's session. So to start today, we have what a good one looks like and what a bad one looks like. We've got a good example of an effective opening and we have an example of an ineffective opening. What I want you to do to begin is to read through these two examples. I want you to consider what successes there are, particularly in the green one on the left, what could be improved, particularly with the red one on the right. I want you to note down two or three successes that we find in the green and two or three improvements for the one in the red. Give yourself about three minutes for this task. So pause the recording and then play again once you have your criteria. Two to three effective things in the what a good one looks like and two to three improvements on the what a bad one looks like. So if we look at the, the good one to begin, look at the opening straight away, I ran. Now we've got a short sentence which immediately intrigues me as a reader because the writer's withholding information. I don't know why he's running and it establishes a sense of panic, um, of, of kind of fear. And so that's a great start there. What I had seen was unforgettable, a tattoo on my memory, and now all I could do is run. So we've got there a nice metaphor, a tattoo on my memory, rather than just saying it was uh, stuck or imprinted, the word tattoo is a great one there because it gives an image of something kind of being branded on him and, and never leaving. As the sweat stung my eyes and my heart pounded against its cage of bone, I remembered. I remembered the journey, nice bit of repetition there, bit of anaphora, the backpack, Becky, the bones. Again, this is making me ask questions like, well, what is in the backpack? Who's Becky? And what on earth are these bones? So a nice one word sentence is a bit of a triple there as well, which is great. Even a bit of alliteration with backpack, Becky and bones. As the rain pelted me unrelentingly, clouds of thick darkness threatened to envelop me and I welcomed it. So a great bit of pathetic fallacy at the end there. And, and I welcomed it as a great end, nice short sentence to add a sense of poignancy. So that's a, a kind of four things I would have picked out, but there are a number of other things you may have had for that one as well. So let's move on now to the, what a bad one looks like. So this other example, we begin with Becky was 16 and Jerry was 12. Immediately, I'm not interested. You know, it's too vague. Um, and it's just giving me information. There's no sense of description, no withholding information. I know there's Becky and Jerry and their ages. They were as best friends as friends could be. Oh dear. You know, it's just very kind of 
kind of colloquial. It sounds like somebody's talking, doesn't it? BFF friends for life. That is not good. We've got slang again there, abbreviations with BFFs, very basic vocabulary. They've not really gone into any kind of detail. They knew each other since primary school and now they were in high school together. Again, just giving me information. The sentences aren't varied. Not a good attempt. Don't worry, said Becky. We'll be okay if we stick together. So inaccurate use of direct speech there. Not following our four rules, which are on your retrieval sheet. So, and again, it doesn't really add anything to the story. And you know what? They did. Again, really just basic. It's not building tension. It's not building up the story. So please avoid any of those things in the red, what a bad one looks like, and aim for the criteria on the one on the left. For your KIP today, you have a choice of task. You're either going to write a description or write a narrative, and this is completely up to you. Remember what I said before, the skills you use are interchangeable. So I don't mind which one you choose. Now, if you choose the descriptive piece, you'll need to write a description suggested by the image on the screen. It might help if you're able to, to print out this image. If not, it's quite a straightforward image. And remember, we're just being inspired by it. So we've got a beach and we've got a young boy running on the beach. But remember, you can add in details. You can take away details. You can change the weather or time of day. So there's all sorts of creative ways you could use this image. If you're going to complete the story, then your story will have the title, The Run. So think about where you could go with that. Is it going to be a, a marathon? Is someone being chased? There's again, lots of different ways you could interpret that word, run, and think about that as you come to do your KIP today. So there's the task that we saw earlier at the top of the screen. Your timing is 45 minutes. There's three helpful hints here. Uh, definitely plan your response. You want to spend five to 10 minutes planning it out, following the planning structures we've gone through together. Uh, look at the setting and weather. See if you want to change that and how you're going to create mood and atmosphere. So that's pathetic fallacy. And finally, don't forget to extend uh, your vocabulary and to vary your sentence types, which sometimes we forget to do when we're writing because we get so involved in our ideas. But look at every sentence, make every sentence count make every word count. The What a good one looks like from earlier in the lesson, I've also put there so you can use that to help you write. And when you complete it, your KIP should be com com uh, submitted on the day of, of this lesson, but no later than 3 p.m. on the Friday of this week. Uh, so make sure that gets sent to the relevant email address, which is there at the bottom of the screen. So pause the recording now, set yourself 45 minutes, write out your response, and then you can email it to your teachers when you're finished. So our final part of our last few weeks on creative writing, I want you to rate your confidence for each of the following skills. So you've got one to six, which you can write down the side of your notebook, write out each of those. So engaging opening, use of pathetic fallacy. And after each one, give yourself a score out of 10 for how confident you feel with using that particular device or that particular skill. 10 being completely confident and zero meaning I have no idea what that even is. So engaging opening, okay, is your opening engaging and can you complete each time an effective narrative hook or uh, kind of moody uh, atmospheric piece? Use of pathetic fallacy number two, can you use weather to create the mood? Number three, can you add detail into that description? Now that's our learning intention for today. So is there a lot of metaphor, simile, devices, vocabulary, that sort of thing to extend your writing? not like the what a bad one looks like that we saw at the start of this session. Use of direct speech, can you use it and can you use it accurately? Are you using short bits of speech following our four rules of direct speech? Passage of time, can you include flashbacks, maybe even flash forwards and use them to develop the character or the story? And finally, cyclical closings. So as this is in your retrieval uh, sheets, can you refer back to the opening in your closing paragraph to create a sense of a circle that we've come back to the beginning, much like the structure that we read through, or rather that we watched, when we watched the hero's journey. When you've finished that, whatever your lowest rated skill is, how are you going to ensure that you improve that as we move forward? So if your uh, lower score was a two for, uh, say, direct speech, how are you going to address that later? Are you going to have another practice? Um, are you going to write out a sentence using the speech? So I want to know what your lowest is and how you're going to improve it. What's your strategy? So complete that for the last few minutes of today's session. Well done for all your hard work today.